I am at a very unique garden today. It is filled with plants and with railroad trains. And I'm with Warner, who's the homeowner here. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank Great. you. Great. And you are a member of the Rose City Garden Railroad Society. And you just have this unbelievable backyard with a train. Yes, it's a big one. <laughs> we filled up as much of the yard as I could with trains. It's amazing. Yeah. So how did you get all started with this? Well, it started when I was just a kid. <gasps> if we wanted to go that far back. Lionel trains under the Christmas tree oh. all my life through college. I had to put it aside. Medical school, I started playing with small trains. We had a, a club in my garage in medical school. And then, uh, again, kids came and decided there wasn't room in a house, so started putting <laughs> things out. And, and we live in the most beautiful garden area, of the, I think, of the world here in Oregon, and it was just a natural fit to find trains that would run outside. Oh, that is cool. About 25 years ago, they started making these trains that were big, about the size of a loaf of bread, and they run beautifully outside. The track is durable, it stays in place all year long, and it just evolved from there. Oh, it is remarkable because it's not just the backyard, it goes into the front yard, it actually goes into the basement? Actually runs into the basement for needing more space to turn the trains around and head back up. And the trains in, in our concept that I like don't run in circles. <laughs> the train imaginarily runs from a town we call Glacier. It's somewhere in the far northwest, runs to a town we call Bear's Paw. And the train in our imagination actually goes from one place to another. But to serve more purpose during harvest season from our grapevines, we actually cut the grapes from the from the vines, put some in the cars, and run the cars to the crusher and destimmer, and actually make it a working railroad. So <laughs> it's more than just a toy train. Ah, and you've really melded a lot of your different hobbies here because you said you're into bonsai, and in the front, those trees are just kind of larger bonsai. Yes, I, again, the hobbies of, of bonsai, or at least small trees, uh, was one area which kind of melded into garden railroading. and. I like to work in the dirt and with <laughs> rocks. I've always been fascinated with geology and architecture. I love building the structures. In fact, if you wanted to know the truth, I like structures maybe a little more than trains. Oh, so we I won't have say that too loud. friends in our club. <laughs> well, the friends in our club know that, and they come and help run trains on busy days like this. Oh, and well, it is lovely. And how long is the train? How many feet of track do you have? There's about 1,200 feet of main line. Oh, amazing. It goes from one town eventually to another town. You can turn around in places and go back where you were, but for operation, it we imagine it as a real railroad. It's just small. Ah, Well, you know, you've heard one side of the story, but I'm going to talk to Brooke, who is Warner's spouse. And so, Brooke, what kind of compromise did we have to come to make this all happen? Well, we're constantly making compromises. <laughs> uh, when we originally started landscaping, I wanted grass, a yard, waterfalls, and he wanted a train track, and I wanted some grapevines, and he wanted a train track, and I wanted roses and tomatoes, and he wanted a train track. <laughs> so we now have a lot of train track, but we also have grapevines, tomatoes, roses, and grass. And uh, I love having a cup of coffee in the morning and sitting outside listening to the waterfall. And it's, you know, it's just so relaxing and private for ourselves. And uh, we've worked together in our business for um, over 35 years. And so we've learned to work together and make compromises you know, through our life. And uh, we're a team and uh, we've made it work and enjoy our yard and hobby very much. Oh, and it's just lovely, lovely. Normally, the Rose City Garden Railroad Society hosts visitors to their gardens on the Saturday before Father's Day. This year, they are not allowed to do that because of COVID-19. You can still see some of their great train layouts and find out more information on the Society on their website and Facebook pages. We'll have links to those sites on the Garden Time webpage. Thank you.